Alrighty, so for today, we're going to be taking a look at some data. Uh, the UCs have started to come out. You may have noticed that some students have already started to post, maybe on their social media, some of their results, some of their excitements, maybe some of their frustrations. Uh, but yeah, because the results are out at this point, or starting to come out, I figured it's a good time to look back and see if the data's out. Um, and so I checked, and uh, preliminary data seems to be in, but the full spread of data uh, is going to be probably a, a couple of weeks behind uh, as they finalize the results. And then they also have to deal with waitlist results and things like that. But while I had it open, I figured we'd take a, a trip down memory lane to last year and see how 2021 data uh, panned out. And maybe we can extrapolate some patterns, some expectations, some uh, surprises in the data perhaps. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive right in. This is uh, going to be a link that I'll provide below. Again, this is directly from the UCs. I'd like to focus on the UCs because they are pretty good litmus tests, in my opinion. They're pretty good indicators in terms of like what your average GPA and your test score should be um, in relation to uh, applying to schools that are similarly ranked, uh, I guess, based on U.S. news rankings. So uh, if you are within the range of, let's say, top you know, let's say rank 20s, that's where UCLA was, is, uh, then you can expect some of the other schools to be somewhat within the same ballpark in terms of grades and expectations. Uh, with that being said, this is the undergraduate admissions summary. Let's see if I could zoom in just enough for y'all. And we can start with freshman applicants. Um, you can see right away that uh, what I'd want to do is just source by school and show you something interesting that I, was, I found. I was kind of tinkering around with the data before I started recording this. Uh, but if you could see from California public high schools, you have a lot of Asians that are applying over the years from left to right all the way up until 2021. Look how much it's growing. It's a, It had a quite a dip from, it had a small little dip from 2018 to 2019, but it just continues to grow in its capacity. Uh, additionally, Latinos as well, we went from, in a matter of 10 years, more than double the acceptance um, from 21,000 to 44,000. So that's pretty significant what you're noticing there. Uh, I feel like all general ethnicities are on the rise. Uh, so they're just increasing their capacity for how many they can admit. Um, if you take a look at something interesting at California private schools, though, so if you're looking at private schools and let's say you're an Asian student attending a private school in California, uh, it doesn't really change by much, though, of course, you'd have to look at the proportions. I don't have access to that at the moment, but it's just interesting to note that you have about 4000 students that are going to be coming from California private schools, whereas public schools, you'll have closer to 34000. That's pretty uh, significant. I'd want to see the public to private ratio, but just thought I'd point that out. Also, if you are a student that's not in California, so a non-California domestic student or from a high school where you're not in California, uh, that's risen as well pretty significantly for Asian students from 3,600 to 14,000. And yeah, Latinos are going from 1,200 to 5,400. Pretty interesting. Any comments I'd want to make about this? Um, I feel like they're trying their best to grow as much capacity as they can. Uh, but as you'll see, it's going to continue to get just more and more competitive. You'll see a kind of GPA creep upwards. Um, in terms of those who are admitted, yeah, let's see if I could back up, take a look at transfers real quick. Uh, if you're interested in some of the transfer data, uh, one thing I noted is, this is for all campuses, by the way. You can uh, later on filter between each, and I'll go back to freshmen to try to do that. But if you are a California Community College student, uh, for Asians, the number would apply to around 10,000 since 8,000. So it's pretty, it's not that much of a significant growth compared to freshman admits. Uh, but in terms of accepted students, of all students, 28. Asians accounted for about 27% of them. Latinos accounted for about 28%. Um, so about seven, about 7.7, 7, 7, 7 8,000 students per year that are Asian will be getting in uh, hopefully this year. It's just a continuing growth curve. Uh, let's take a look uh, back to freshmen. 
and take a look at let's say UCLA. UCLA has been really popular as of late. So if we go ahead and let's do UCLA and let's go to California Public Schools. So in terms of California Public Schools, UCLA had about 25, 35%. Those that were admitted, wow, look at that boys. It's uh, Asians that were admitted in, is 2,779. Interesting. And there were 25,000 applicants. I hope I'm reading that right, because if that's the case, that's pretty significant. Wow. How about in terms of, let's say, California private schools? So in terms of California private schools, there were about 3,000 Asians who applied last year, 2021 year, and about only 482 were able to get in. Okay. Let's take a look at Berkeley. Let's see if the numbers change for Berkeley. Yeah, so UCLA and Berkeley, not much of a difference there, right? Let's see the number of students who are applying, 2,600. Let's go to public schools. So for public schools, we'll have 20,000 Asians who apply and then 3,700. So that's for Berkeley. It's a pretty interesting tool set. If, you're inter if you just want an overview, um, you can also take a look at transfers and have uh, specific campuses to look at. Um, overarching trend, Obviously, California residents are going to have a huge advantage. If you want to see how much uh, of the space you're fighting for, just uh, click a different source of your high school, so non-domestic or even a foreign institution. Let's let's take a look at foreign. I'm a, I'm actually really interested in that. So in total, of all foreign, so they're going to include all foreigns. So we'll have twenty-seven thousand applicants. Huge growth since ten years ago from seven thousand. Yikes! That's almost four times four x. And then from there, uh, you have the admit of about 18. Okay, so if we break that, let's say Berkeley. Let's get, take a look at Berkeley. It's about 2,000 foreign out of around 20, so about 10%. Let's do Irvine. Irvine's got a bit more of a percentage proportion there. So about 16 to six, so about three times. Um, if we take a look at UCLA, Again, this is for freshmen that are international students. You'll find that, man, another kind of 10%. So uh, the higher the ranking you see, the, the less uh, room there it seems to be for international applicants. Um, overall, <laughs> I feel like there's no category here that's getting smaller. It kind of makes you um, uh, think about the, the challenge that the UC administration has to, to try to handle this ballooning um, demand and, and number of applicants it's just growing each year um, I have one more data set I want to show you so the other data set is a lot juicier in my opinion I feel like a lot of parents would want to go through this even a lot of students like students um, may want to just have a much more of a detailed view of their their chances for UCs so this is gonna be the second link let me zoom out a bit so this is admission by source and it's a little bit hard at first to understand, but it's not too bad. Basically, you can take a look at FR. These tabs at the top are FR stands for freshmen. TR stands, stands for transfers. Uh, let's start with freshmen. So F by year, F by high school, some uh, F by uh, uh, GPA you can even take a look at. Um, so I was interested in this one right here, freshman GPA by year. Um, if you want to be more specific, you do Berkeley. And you could see each high school. You can literally look up your high school, guys. So let's choose a very, I don't know, let's choose a UC, uh, let's choose an Irvine school. Let's do Beckman High School. I think it's Arnold Beckman. There it goes, it shows up. So you could see how, uh, if you did university wide, um, you can look at the typical data. Let's do Berkeley. So Berkeley right away jumps up. You want to be admit data average around 4.3 GPA. Enrollment's around there too. Let's see for UCLA. So UCLA is just a little bit lower, 4.26, 4.21. Um, let's try another one. Let's do Northwood. So if you're aiming for UCLA, 4.2, it's about the same for 
Let's see, Berkeley. Berkeley's a little bit lower. That's interesting. 4.18. Again, Northwood, I think, is, is, is um, you got to know the details of the school. It has, it doesn't offer, um, I think, APs to uh, freshmen or sophomores. And so when someone throws out a, a, a GPA, frankly, it's pretty arbitrary until you know what school it's from. And from there, you can start to see that it, it, an actual number, 4.3 versus 4.4, uh, it's not contextualized for an admission officer to, to decide to, to be able to tell you whether you have a good chance or not. Uh, so you have to be able to compare yourself to your high school and the, the years previous. Uh, so if you go like high school, a freshman GPA by high school, you could take a look at Arnold Beckman and in 2021, uh, sorry, let me see. In 2021, uni high, uh, University-wide for UCs altogether was about a 4.0. Berkeley was 4.2. LA was 4.26. Last year, it was roughly the same. Uh, it's not too much noise. In the, it's not like it's getting harder or harder at Arnold Beckman itself. It just seems like you still have to be around that 4.2, 4.3 range to have a good shot. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you guys. The, the, gives some eye openers as to like the differentiations. For example, if, if you wanted to compare Beckman High School to say Irvine High School, um, maybe you are a freshman or, or you're a rising freshman and you wanna take a look at what kind of GPAs are expected of you. It should be high school specific and so this would be a great source or tool. Um, and then you can use the UCs, the expectations here as a general reference for all the rest of your schools uh, based on a ranking uh, that I use for US News. Yeah, here's Irvine High, Berkeley 2.7, LA 4.38. Wow. It makes me very curious. I'm going to try um, Troy High School. So we go to Troy. <laughs> Troy's GPA is really tough to get. So 4.19, UCLA 4.2. Yeah. So. It's every school is going to be different with their GPA and what your admit rate and average expectations should be. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I hope that this was helpful. I'm going to, again, provide the links below. Uh, I think that if you just want to get a sense of what your GPA should be for certain schools, you can base it off of each of the UCs. Again, go on to US News, just type in, you know, like US News rankings. And you can see if, let's say, go to best national university rankings, where is UCLA at? So it's around rank 20. So if you're around rank 20, and then you can expect, and you go to currently, you attend a school, um, let's say that's, um, What's another school that we could try? Let's just go with um, Woodbridge High School. Okay, so if you're gonna go to Woodbridge and you're aiming for a school like UCLA, it's about a 4.29 weighted GP expectation. So you can expect Notre Dame to be around a 4.29, Amory a 4.29, Rice, Cornell, uh, so that's how you want to use this all. Uh, I hope that this was helpful. Have fun kind of parsing through. Uh, the data is out there. You just have to know how to look it up. And I hope, yeah, you can uh, feast your eyes on what the expectations are going to be for you or your son or your daughter. All right, have fun with this.